I vow not to nut until this deck goes 5-0, because as we saw in the last video, this deck can be quite good. And if you haven't seen the last video, don't worry, all you need to know, uh, counters, uh, big big creatures, and, and and untappy stuff. Great, good job. Now you're now you're an expert on the deck, and is this, this card's good too. With the combo between these two cards here being the most gangster part of the deck, so now you're an expert. But this time, we're going for the 5-0. We made a few changes here. In the last version of the deck, we had two Throne of Geths. It works well with the Servant, but it's one of those cards that works well when we're winning, but if we don't have any creatures out, then it's not that great. Also, I cut one Servant for a similar reason in that if we don't have a lot of creatures out, having one Servant out doesn't really do much. So I read through all the comments in the last video, a lot of good observations. The main concern people had was that Vile, we weren't getting our money's worth with the card. Basically, we'd run out of steam a lot, and in some games, we'd only put out one creature with it. So I tried a version of this deck where I cut it completely, and it just doesn't work. We really need Vile to keep up the tempo of the deck and put out a lot of converted mana cost two creatures at once. So to give this card more value, I added in two Life's Legacies in replacement of Throne of Geth. It's a bit unusual. It's a sorcery for two that says, sacrifice a creature, and then draw cards equal to its power. So it's particularly good in our deck where we have cards like this with Modular or Ravager that can get really big, we sack it, and its counters get moved onto another creature. Life's Legacy also works really well with Hangerback Walker. A lot of times our opponent will purposely not kill Walker, so having Life's Legacy is pretty nice. And with Aether Vial, we can quickly dump all the creatures we draw with Life's Legacy. So hopefully that helps the deck out. In addition, a lot of you guys recommended this card here, Animation Module. Basically, whenever a 1-1 counter gets placed onto a creature, we can pay one mana and make a Servo Token. And this works pretty well in our deck because with Vile, we tend to have a lot of unused mana. And this card works exceptionally well on our deck with this card here metallic mimic there's a near infinite combo you can do between mimic and module because with mimic we can name servos and so when module triggers a servo will come into play it gets a one counter though because of the mimic which will then again trigger the module and then we make another servo which gets plus one from the mimic and then it just keeps on going till we run out of mana quite gangster also i forgot to mention this in the last video normally we name constructs with mimic because we do have a lot of constructs but we can also name thopters with it so late game if we have a walker out we can use mimic to name thopter and when the walker dies all the thopter tokens get counters on them and if we happen to have a hardened scales then it's even better as far as the sideboard goes i added an extra welding jar one reason is to fight artifact removal after game one but it also increases our chance of playing chalice in turn one with the help of mox opal and dark steel citadel i also added a torpor orbs to the sideboard basically it stops team index but now we're ready to go let's get to that gameplay but first if you're not subscribed be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this and let me know in the comments what you think of the deck because last time the feedback really helped so keep it coming but without further ado here's the gameplay and i hope you enjoy it opening hand i don't know we have such good cards here but if we draw any more lands we're screwed so i think we're better off mulling and yeah we can make this work probably should bottom that start off with the module and pass back opal so best move here hanger back and with this trigger we'll make a servo cool back to our opponent bar six is probably titan shift and what do we got here this will be kinky play this name servo swing for one and with hanger back we'll go ahead do this hopefully they don't have anger of the gods back to our opponent and a hardened scales Ooh. so here's what we're gonna do scales tap the walker if only we had more mana that would be quite gangster but we'll swing for three back to our opponent bull us directly okay so i wonder if this is going straight for escape shift kind of feel bad didn't name thopter Ooh. Oh dear. At least it's not an Emrakul. Hmm. Opponent swings. So he has six damage. Hitting that. Ah. And ah. Uh, all right. I think we're still okay because of the Ravager. And another one. But watch this. This is going to be quite gangster. Ravager passing on the module. Then tapping this. And then whoop de do We get to win with a servo. Should have sacrificed this thing first because all those triggers. I don't want to have to keep clicking. No. So sack that. Then la la la. And there's a concede. So pretty good. Pretty good. So going into game two. I'm going to dump two servants. One worker for the orb. Spell sky. And we'll jar and with that let's go to game two and in case it isn't obvious the torpor orb is for that bala thing and then also the the titan thingy and spell skies for the bala cuts and walling jars just in case they try and board wipe us and with that let's go to game two opening hand interesting i say we keep start off with an ink and vial and pass back and now that they're tapped out we'll go mimic naming construct and we'll save the worker for the end of their turn in case they try and board wipe us back to them grow spasm with the hail the shit okay search for land and create a eldrazi thingy blob yeah okay then we shall vial on the worker and a welding jar well what to do what to do i wouldn't mind sacking the worker to life's legacy and putting the counters on the ink so yeah we'll swing in they take it and then go that life's legacy sacking that putting them there and what shall we draw hardened scales all right and back to our opponent come on bring on the battle cuts we got this there's titan gets the lands but no targets i think we still vile in the spell skite though yeah all right and a ravager Ooh, with the power of math do we get this i think we do i think we do two 
four. Yeah, hell yeah, we get this. Come to daddy. <laughs> and there's a concede. All right, so the question was, how much did Life's Legacy do for us? Because the card is new to our deck. I mean, it drew us two cards, both hard and skills. I think it was pretty good. I'm still on the fence about it because there's some decks where there's so much removal coming at us that sometimes it just doesn't feel right, I guess. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out, but it seems pretty good. I don't know. But pretty good start. On to the next ones. Opening hand this seems pretty solid aside from not having green for this, but definitely keep. Start with Vile, pass back, and it looks like it's Affinity. Indeed. So far, our record against Affinity is quite good. Kind of depends if we can get the Ballista, though. Although Overseer and Servant are pretty good together, so you have a good shot at this. Start with Overseer, and they might have Galvanic Blast, but they might not. And pass back. And they have an Overseer as well. Ornithopter. And if they have Galvanic Blast, we'll see it this turn. And nice, nice. So we'll go Hardened Scales. And could just go with the Ink. That'll be pretty good. Eh. Now nah, we'll go Hanger back. Then Servant. So quite Gangster, do this. And then end the turn. Do that. Cool. Back to our opponent. That's Champion. Doesn't have protection from our stuff, though. Opponent swings. Interesting. So if we can pull Ravager, then we'll be in really good shape. Another Scales. So I'd say it's definitely worth playing. Then Ink into a creature. Then Overseer. And do we swing with the Hanger back? This alone wouldn't be lethal. Yeah, I'll swing with it. Opponent takes all of it. Okay. Then end the turn. Untap the Overseer. And we can use it as a blocker. Cool. How can he win this? I mean, I don't think he can. There's just so much going on here. What? Opponent swings with that, too. Why? Blocks there. Okay. Then before damage is dealt, turn that into a creature. Tap. 7-7. Seven, seven. Okay. And there's a concede. Dang. I mean, I don't want to brag or anything, but but dang. So going to game two and dump all this for all this. Lost stuff to bring in. Unfortunately, got to dump this stuff to make room. But with that, let's go to game two. Open hand a bit risky, but we'll try it. That's a lot of stuff. Turn one. So back on our turn, go vile. Pass back. And a cranial plating. Jeez. Six damage already. Hmm. And there's a ballista. Shoot. I think we've got to wait one turn, though. Yeah, one more turn. One more turn. So we'll go one hard scales this turn and then pass back. Oh, man, this is pretty nerve wracking. No Ravager. Scourge. Okay. Okay, this is looking really good now. It's, I see it. They're lining up to die. And a walker. Too good. So we shall go hard and scales. Then mimic. Then ballista. <laughs> and a walker. <laughs> cool, cool. Back to our opponent. Uh, swings with everything. So first of all, ping that. Targets that. We'll kill it. And I'm fine with taking one. Back in our turn. Might as well put a counter on the ballista. Swing with everything. And back to our opponent. This is just too good. I wouldn't mind playing affinity every every match, you know? Ooh, and an overseer. So opponent swings in. We'll ping it. And goes back to our turn. Another walker. So put more counters on it. Ping this. Might as well play the hanger back as well and then swing in for 10 12 back them in nothing okay overseer could vial it in put counters on that swing and there's a concede oh man it just it just tore through affinity oh man wow i mean because you know how, like when you go up against affinity with like any other deck you're just like ah oh, jesus affinity again right now it's like please let it be affinity we're playing this deck though the deck is just it's just it's just too good it's too good it's too good the modern meta game it just can't handle this right well i is happy but the happiness doesn't end there we must continue so on to the next one opening hand nothing super great but it's not terrible either so let's give it a shot start with citadel opal and do we go worker or wait hmm, that's a tough one one. Yes, yeah, wait. Ooh, shoot. Wah, wah. Takes the Ravager. Okay. And nice, a hanger back. So let's go Mimic, naming Construct, then Worker, hanger back. And what more could we ask for? Back to our opponent. I mean, we could have asked for like a Hardened Scales, and that would be better. Overseer. And do we swing with Ink or do hanger back? Hmm. Think Ink isn't the right move here. So instead, I'll swing with these two. Probably has removal for us. Hey, what do you know? Then we'll play Overseer, tap out the Ballista, and back to our opponent. Terminate. Okay. Then passes back. Hardened Scales. Nice. So my as we'll go hardened scales ink for three or technically two and then one poison and while our opponent's tapped out we'll go hanger back back to them now will we see blood braid probably jun might be our worst matchup yep there it is because a lot of the cards are high value just like ours and theirs are arguably better back in our turn another walker so what to do what to do i think we swing with everything and see how he responds no blocks then we shall play the walker and back to our opponent and it can see oh, oh, okay <laughs> That's good, that's good. Jund is very, very tough for us. I mean, very, very tough for us. So I'll take whatever we can get. So going on to game two, I'm going to dump two Life's Legacies, two Servants, to put an extra Welding Jar, two Revokers, and Spell Skite. Revokers mostly for Liliana and Grim Lava Master if they have it, and Spell Skite for the removal. And there we go. And then game three, we could resort to Chalices if we need to, just to try and throw them off. And ooh, kind of like this. Yeah, we'll keep. And nothing from them, okay. So we'll start with the module, the Opal, and then pass back. Goyf. So what to do? I suppose Ballista, and then make a servo back to our opponent 
opponent swings. Unfortunately, we can't block and ping because that'll kill that. Bump this by two. So no blocks. Fatal push. Okay. So ping our opponent. We go to 16. Back on to another overseer. Ooh. Yeah. All right. Let's go for it. We'll swing for one. They take it. Then go overseer. Overseer. And if they have a maelstrom pulse, we hella screwed. But if they survive, or at least one of them survives, that servos for days. Oh my god. No. Why? Oh well. Hmm. On the bright side, though, we'll go mimic naming servo. Then watch this shit. Worker making a servo, which triggers it again, and we'll make another one. But we're out of mana, so no more. And then do we swing for one or chump? I think we chump with it. Back to opponent. Wow. Fine. Could always make more. So we'll also lose the opal. And don't want to block because I want to save this for when we have mana. Darn. Another one. And a hanger back. So it puts us in a weird position. I suppose we'll play hanger back. Then make two servos, putting us at four. And then we'll have to pass back. Blood braid and a dark confidant. Hmm. Guess we'll hang in there. Block, block, and block. Putting the counters there. Welding jar. Well, play the jar and then pass back to our opponent. Terminate. Ouch. So we'll use. Oh, we can't regenerate it because of terminate. Ah. Well, last round of servos. We'll make three. Alrighty. Swing with those. Block both. All right. And the news. So we need like an arc bound or something. Nah, even arc bound wouldn't do it. And with that, our opponent gets this. Well, we could block those three. We'll play it out one more turn. Draw. Arc bound. Might as well. And could make a servo, but I'm going to save it to use on this. Back to our opponent. Opponent goes for it. Blocks like this. Then tap. And uh, I mean, maybe regenerate that. Yeah, sure. Why not? For the worker and everything. Okay. And then a goif. And how do we get out of this one? I suppose we don't. Oh, well. On to game three. Now, the question is, do we go the chalice route? We only saw one card last game that cost one from them so in a lot of ways it's not worth it so i think we'll choose to not do it also we could put a canis in for the blood bread i'm not sure if it's worth it though i don't know i might regret it but let's go for it opening hand we do have the vial so i'm gonna give it a shot so vial welding jar and back to opponent okay and an ink nice so we shall go hang her back and pass back to our opponent opponent passes back okay vials in cool and then i suppose swing at the ink and the archon worker okay and then back to them still nothing okay tap this attempts to fatal push do we regenerate i think so regenerate becomes a 2-2 and opal didn't want that play horizon canopy to draw a card nice servant okay i can go for that swing for one and then tap this play the servant and end a turn untap the walker will they figure it out yeah all right sure back to our opponent and anger of the gods are you kidding me that's too good it's too good Let's see if we can somehow still get it though mimic and eh. we'll draw a card overseer could swing with the ink but i think let's go mimic and then overseer so construct and back to our opponent lava mancer nice end a turn oh, okay terminates that play the overseer and nice revoker so put that in now naming grim lava mancer Turn this into a creature. Swing, tap, and back to our opponent. Collective brutality. Shoot. Can't do anything there. Wah, wah, wah. And another ink. But this is tough. Swing for two. Five infect. But as long as that Grim Lava Master's there, it's going to be tough for us. Dark Confidant. Opponent passes back. Hanger back. So we'll play the hanger back. Would have been better if it were a ballista, but whatever. Opponent kills it. And also a Coligan's command. Ouch. Killing both of them. Then swings for two. Sure. Back on our turn. Another ink. So let's put that out there. And pass back. We still have options. If we can pull a Ravager, we have a good shot. They're already down to 13 as well. I just feel like we're missing opportunities here because if it weren't for the anger of the gods, I don't know. I don't know. Go ahead file no didn't want to see that they might be running out of stuff in the graveyard let's actually take a stab at it all three so we'll probably lose that yep back to them oh, on a fatal push too man man oh man inquisition they can put that in the graveyard as well it's enough to take out both of these things and a revoker interesting if it weren't for that push though i mean do we go for it, it might be worth a shot maybe they'll misclick I, I doubt it though they basically have to fatal push and then choose not to grim lava mancer which is very very unlikely because we play this first let's fatal push that before that eh. it's a very unlikely ah uh, yeah it's that then doesn't push it though hmm. okay and then pushes it another goy we could also make that as a creature as well punch tries to look at our hand and leech let's go ahead file the revoker can't name land so that's a name grim lava mancer and mails from pulse it's just too good it's just too good i mean what what could we have done we we gave him a run for his money though dang i mean yeah i don't know how we can get out of it jund is just super tough for us if we had pulled ballista earlier on we had a good shot if we could take out these two guys but other than that it kind of just sucks out all of our tempo from the deck uh, i don't know i don't know it's just a crappy feeling but they just pulled a lot of answers consistently and eh, it happens all right but on to the next one opening hand i'd say this is pretty good aether vial yeah we'll keep starting with the vial and passing back stomping ground and ooh and we'll try and get away with an overseer they may or may not kill it though back to opponent rc so it looks like we're pretty safe file in the worker and then time for happy fun time servant ravager turn that into creature then do this and swing for two they go to 18 and then end of turn untap do it again and i'd say that's pretty good value blood red elf sure and a lightning bolt hmm looks like we might have to sack the worker to save whatever he targets yes we're saving we'll sacrifice the worker putting its counters on the overseer so it's safe then opponent passes back but 
but that will give us the win. We'll go Walker, this, and with 12 poison counters, that's the game. So going into game two, I'm going to dump two servants, one worker to put in one molding jar, a spell sky for Valakut, and Torpor Orb for the Balath and Titan. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, not terrible, not great either. So I am going to mull, and this is much better. We'll keep and bottom that for us and start things off. Harden scales, pass back. Alrighty. I suppose we'll go hanger back as a 2 2 pass back. So they could anger the gods it, and its ability won't trigger, but they use the bolt instead. Okay. So we get two little ones, and opponent passes back. Okay. Opal. So let's try swinging in. Okay. They go to 17. And then we shall go Ravager, and then Ballista, and we should be good. And back to our opponent. And Slag Storm. Interesting. So let's try and save the Arcbound, although they could have an anti artifact card, and that would really hurt us. Might as well ping for one. And if they have Nature's Claim, we're dead. If not, we're looking really good. Oh, I think we got it. Oh, yes, daddy is. So we shall turn Ink Moth into Creature, play Ballista, ping, and we're super close to finishing him off. But I don't want to risk dumping all the counters on that because he could still have Nature's Claim, which I don't. Uh, he probably would use it on the Arcbound, though, right? Or maybe he could have Bolt, though. Ugh. Yeah, we'll swing in. Although, we could risk it, sacrifice all the artifacts, and that would be exactly 14. I think if they had removal for the Arcbound, they would have used it last turn, right? Why would they let our lands on tap, you know? So let's just risk it. I, I think it's I think it's a good risk. I don't know. They're stalling, though. Do they have an answer to this? No, they do not. A bit of a one-sided match, but sometimes that's how it goes. So on to the next one. All right, final match. Is this a game-winning hand? I think it could be. So we'll keep. And ooh, Tron. We have a good shot at beating Tron because Ugin can't wipe us. Start with Citadel. Pass back. Play a tower. Another left legacy. Best move here, I would say, is Overseer. And then pass back. Grab a mine. Chromatic Star. Sacks it. And Sylvan Scrying. Grabbing a forest? Okay. Then back on our turn. We'll go Mimic, Walker, and then tap that and pass back. So we're off to a bit of a slow start, but against Tron, we still have a good shot. Never mind. Actually, wait. We can still get the hanger back up. We can also play the Ravager. A little bit risky, but we'll try it. Tap, tap, and then swing for four. Back to our opponent. So sacks that in response. Sacrifice. So that becomes an 8-8. We get eight Thopters and back to our turn. Nice. Well, the odds they have a second one, though. Hmm. Interesting. We'll swing. They go to eight. How do they get out of this one? I don't think they can. Maybe just play. Oh, man. What do we do here? A Vial. An Arcbound Worker. I think just a Vial. Could draw it. Nah, it's pass back. I don't know about the Life's Legacies, though. Like, it seems good at times, but I feel like the times that we'd use it, we'd already be winning. So I don't know. I don't know. It's good value. But it's more for like the nail in the coffin rather than getting out of tight situations. Expedition map. Blist on two. So he fires it now. Doesn't fire it now. Too bad. Citadel. Now here's where things get a bit odd. We'll play the Ravager. Okay. Then might as well put out Worker as well. And we could go Life Legacy. Nah, I don't think so. Now I'll force the move. Swing for eight. Tries to ping that, but in response, we'll sack the Arcbound. Target that. And now how does he do this? Pings it again in response. Sack. And yeah, I'll put the counters there. And there's the win. All right, cool. Life's Legacy. Didn't really use it. And I, I got to rethink this now. Maybe I made a mistake putting it in. I don't know. I mean, after after playing Jund, it's like, I feel like we need cards that get us out of tight spots, not cards that finish it off, you know? So going on to the game two, I'm going to go the Chalice route, dump all this for all this. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, this is almost keepable, but nope, not really keepable at all. Ugh, man. Let's try it. Ballista, might as well. Back to us. We'll go Harden Scales, Opal, and then pass back. And a lot of stuff. And then finally passes back. We'll, we'll play the Ravager and pass back. Another Harden Scales. Might as well combat. And I assume he's going to fire it soon. So might as well sack the Opal and pass back. Actually, maybe we should have played the Ballista. Hmm. I don't know about that one. Will we fire it? No. Wait, yes. Wait, was that green land there before? No, he just played this turn, right? Huh. Maybe we should have gone Ballista. Wait, wait. This is going to be risky. Three Harden Scales and a Ballista. Would that be enough? This is going to be risky. Harden Scales. And I'm willing to bet he has something like Spatial Contortion, Warping Will, or something to take out the Ballista. Hmm. Harden Scales and play the Ballista. Okay, we might get it. We might get it. Even Contortion wouldn't take it out now. Wait, can we get this swing in? Did I miscalculate? Let me think here. That's eight. Wait, no, we didn't. Oh, that's, 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 that's game. Then we'll sack, making it a 15-15, and then ping to victory. Alrighty, cool. I can't remember the last time we had a deck that went that consistent in leagues. Always either 4-1, 3-2. I think it's solid. It took a long time to get the hang of, though, because unless someone's familiar with Affinity, it's really hard to transition to the deck. But that loss, that loss to Jun, though, you know, it was like a slow, grindy loss. It's one thing to lose if you're kind of like top deck a card that wins them the game, but then to lose that slowly and grindily it's like it just, it just made the deck feel so helpless you know and there's canis in the sideboard to stop blood raid elf but we ended up not even using canis against jund so i don't know if you guys have any suggestions how to beat jund with this deck as far as like putting cyber cards in or even changing the main deck a bit uh, i'm all ears but as far as the card life's legacy goes i don't know it felt a bit underwhelming in practice it seemed really good because there were times when arcbound ravager became a 12 12 and then we'd sack it to life's legacy we drew 12 cards we had vials out we had servants out so we were able to play a bunch of stuff but that was in practice and then in the games in the league it just felt like dead weight a lot of times in one regard it has a ton of potential especially in this deck where we have modular with worker and ravager and even things like hanger back walker but then on the other hand it's not instant speed and does open our deck to risk i think just because if we sack a ravager target 
a creature, they could kill that creature in response. And I think in a lot of situations, it'd be better just to keep the Ravager, keep whatever, you know? Even the Walker, sometimes it's better to keep the Walker to make it a big body instead of making those tokens, you know? But gosh, the Life's Legacy, though, I spent so many days deciding on these last three cards. It was between two Life Legacies and the module and like some of the other cards here. I was like switching in and out. And I just went back and forth so many times. I thought Life's Legacy was the answer, but ah, I'm not, I think I think I was wrong. I don't, I don't like to say I was wrong, but I think I was wrong. And if you have any suggestions for cards in the deck, I'd be happy to hear it. I read through all the comments of the last video and just reading the comments helped me understand the deck more. And even though some people thought the file should go out, just reading those comments helped me understand why the deck needs to be careful around Vile and it made me think what hands are worth keeping opening hand because Vile, people were right. It does burn out a lot of times where sometimes we'll get Vile out and doesn't do anything. Maybe we'll play one card the whole game. And Life's Legacy was supposed to be the answer to that, but maybe there's another card out there or maybe just one Life Legacy is good. I can definitely see that happening. I think I think that's the right move. I think we need to have one Life's Legacy to add some fuel to the Vile's, but two is probably overkill. And as far as the sideboard goes, I made a couple changes, but I think this version is the right version. Maybe a few changes here and there though, because Torpor Orb is really good against humans. But then when you put it in perspective, like humans only makes about 7% of the meta, right? Or 6.27 according to MCG Goldfish. But other than humans and Titan Shift, there aren't really any other decks to use this against. So when you think of it that way, it's like, okay, maybe just under 10% of decks will bring this in against. But that's still pretty low compared to something like Spell Sky, which we can bring into almost any matchup and have good value out of it. Whether it's getting under and Staring Bridge, or dealing with Valka, or leashing enchantments from Bogles, it does a lot of stuff. Same with the Revokers. So maybe Torpor Orb can go. I don't know. I don't know. I play this deck so many times in such a short period of time, and it's strange in that one moment, it feels like I've mastered the deck and I understand it. But then on the other hand, it still feels like the deck's in its infancy. Like it still feels like there's room to grow. But I'm probably boring you guys with this ramble. I don't know. I, I just gotta reflect. We, we all have to reflect on the deck, and I need people's help. I need people to say how we beat Jund, and if we dump at least one life's legacy, what do we put in the deck instead? And we could go a fourth mimic. It's a little bit overkill, but I think most people would probably say no to that. I mean, servant we can go back to four servant, but the servant's kind of hit or miss because if we're up against a deck like Jund, servant really isn't that great because if they kill everything but the servant, then the servant's just kind of meh. And I imagine a lot of people would say animation module. It was really good when we saw it in action, which I'd be happy with, but then again, we have chalice, four of them in the sideboard. So can animation module coexist with chalice? And with one more animation module, we'd have 14 cards across one in the deck. And then with chalice, it's like, I don't know. And we dump a lot of stuff out to bring in chalice, but it might be a bit much. I mean, I don't know. But then but then again, it, it would make a lot of sense to dump a life's legacy for this. But then that would also tempt me to drop a servant for another mimic so we can name servo more often. I don't know. There's like a thousand things to think about with this deck. It's just, it's just, it's like, it's such a complex deck. It's so hard to just to like quantify everything, you know? Like how valuable is a mimic? It kind of just depends on what, what our hand is. If we have a bunch of these in our hand, then yeah, it's very valuable. If we have this out, it's very valuable. But if it's late game, we pull it, then it has almost no value. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe I'm just overthinking the deck to a point where I just can't comprehend the deck anymore. I don't know. I don't know. Well, great. So I should probably wrap it up here. And if you like the video and you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe and let me know if you have any other ideas for brews or other ideas in general. But that's all for now. And as always, I hope you have a great day.